Good afternoon, parents. Warm welcome to our 2022 Parents Connection session. This session is for our primary four to primary six parents. In this section, we have two segments. One will be the video briefing. I hope you remain online and listen through the videos because they are important information for you uh, through the video briefing by the school leaders. The second segment will be the Q&A segment where we'll take questions from you. But do listen in to the video briefing before you send in any questions. And if after that you still have questions, do send in your questions through the QR code on screen. I hope you have a meaningful time and that you'll be able to continue with us throughout this session. Thank you. We will transit to the video briefing and see you back here for the Q&A. Good afternoon, parents. Welcome to our Parent Connection session. I hope you've had a good start to the year and you continue to have a meaningful and loving year with your family. I'd like to begin by appreciating you and a big thank you for journeying with us, especially through the last year where we had to manage COVID-19 and you were right beside us and right alongside us in this journey. And to partner us and walk alongside the school, it's important for us to share with you our directions, our vision, lifelong learner, virtuous leader and we achieve that through providing a quality education to nurture wholesome individuals. These are our values, our Lakeside values and our children are very familiar with our Lakeside values with the acronym of L-PRIDE. Love, perseverance, responsibility, integrity, diligence and respect. Do find time to talk to your children about these values and the stories that we share with them. Our strategic thrust on nurturing Lakers to be future ready is a strategic trust that we have dedicated to the development of our children. And we hope that the end of six years of education in Lakeside, our children will be critical thinkers, creative problem solvers, active contributors, responsible leaders, and confident communicators. Every year, we have a theme that we communicate to students, teachers, and our parents. And this year is no different. In fact, this year is special because it is our 20th anniversary. Lakeside turns 20 as a young adult. And the theme for this year is growing in gratitude, soaring in synergy. I like to say it this way because it starts with remembering those who have gone before us. Where we are and who we are now actually is a result of the people who have worked on Lakeside to make Lakeside what it is today. So that's growing in gratitude. Soaring in synergy, we want to look to the future and soar to greater heights. And we can do that when we do it together in synergy and together with our stakeholders, with our teachers, with our partners. This will be a page in, your stu in the student's handbook on page 26 and 27. Do take a look at your child's student handbook. And as part of our 20th anniversary celebration, we have 20 challenges planned for your children. And would, we would like you to join us, join your children in working through these challenges. 
So we have various challenges. For example, we have the um, Science Week Challenge. We have the VIA Challenge. We have a uh, School Leaders Challenge as well. So do look out for the various challenges. We've embarked on the first one already. So do talk to your children and find out what they have to do to participate. And once they have completed that challenge, they'll be given a sticker. So look out for this. And with that context of our 20th anniversary and our theme of soaring in synergy, growing in gratitude, we want to provide a unique Laker Total School experience. This may look familiar to you. This is the frame that we use to communicate how we provide that total Laker school experience. One is to provide the environment which is caring and enabling, to nurture supportive relationships, to ensure that the development of our curriculum is holistic and to strengthen the quality of teaching and learning. And right in the center of that is actually the positive education that we've put in place in Lakeside Primary. I'd like to share with you the Refresh Character and Citizenship Education 2021. Why 2021? Because it started last year with the secondary school and it is starting with the primary schools this year. So the Character and Citizenship Education Refreshed curriculum frame has three focus areas. One is the school environment. And with that, we're talking about the psychological environment here. And that includes positive teacher-student relationship, peer relationships, student voice and ownership, consistent and coherent messaging, and adult role modeling. The second focus area is how we enact the character and citizenship education. That's of course through our CCE lessons, student development um, programs, school-based initiatives, helping our children to apply those lessons as well as through other subjects. And the third focus area would be the CCE curriculum content, family education, national education, cyber wellness, sexuality education, as well as education and career guidance. And right in the center will be the core values. So why do we need a refresh character and citizenship education? Well, it's because things around us, things in the world are changing. And that will bring about changes in the needs of our children as well. There are different stresses that our children go through and the importance of looking into mental health and resilience for our children is key. Our students are also subjected to the influence of the digital space and our values of our parents, our children are also shifting. Our children are looking at YouTube videos, Netflix, so much more out there, and these would influence their values. There's also the change of family profiles. Families nowadays are very complex, not the same as before. Secondly, it's also because we want to build the foundation for success in life for our children. There are three intents, three broad intents, and the first, how we want to address the needs of our children to be relevant in today's world is to develop self-awareness and self-management skills to look at social awareness and to manage relationships. And thirdly, to equip our children to make responsible decisions. I want to share with you 
With all that in mind, with the refresh CCE 2021, how are we in Lakeside developing our programs and what are some of the unique programs that we have for student development and well-being? One of which is our FALCON model for positive education. And FALCON here is an acronym which stands for Fostering Pos Positive Relationship, A for Accomplishing Goals, L for Leveraging Strengths, C Counting Your Blessings, O for Opportunities to Contribute, and N Nurturing Wholesome Individuals. Let me take you through this and show you some of the programs that we have mapped against the Falcon model. The Falcon model, you can see some of our programs. There's the peer support program. We have our project gratitude and the counting your blessings and our ALP thinkers with heart and the opportunities to contribute and also mental health support and the nurturing wholesome individuals. So we have the various activities that we have designed to ensure that we are able to meet the needs of the children using the Falcon model. We also have the SOAR curriculum, which we have customized um, and included in our FTGP, our Form Teacher Guidance Curriculum. SOAR stands for Strengths-Based development. So for example, our P5s and our P6s go through this program where they discover their strengths and find out how they can leverage their strengths. O for optimistic disposition, how we can teach our children to be appreciative and to show gratitude to those who have touched their lives and to reflect upon how they can be positive, how they can be resilient, and how they can take on that disposition of being positive in their lives. A, achieving their personal best, includes target setting, setting smart goals, and having an understanding of success. It's not just about scoring well in their tests, and it goes beyond that. Of course, R is about relating well with others. So we share with our children social skills and how to attend to conflicts. So S-O-A-R, our SOAR curriculum, is a customized curriculum which we've included in our Form Teacher Guidance curriculum, hoping that this would help our children to develop life skills which they can take with them through life. The second intent is to build foundations for success in life. And it's important for us to begin at the primary school level. And an example of building that foundation for success in life is through the executive functioning skills. We equip our children with, for example, skills to regulate their behavior, regulate their emotions, and as well as cognitive regulation. Let me share with you a little bit more what does executive function mean and I'll show you how, I'll share with you how our school intends to pilot and embark on this program. So what is executive function? It's about preparing our children, equipping them to get things done and it's the management system of the brain without which our children would not be able to be disciplined, will not be able to um, focus, may not be able to start in um, their homework. It's a set of cognitive skills that supports goal-directed behavior. This is something that's shared by uh, Dr. Sylvia Chu, a doctor in the Department of Child Development in KK Women's and Children's Hospital. And this EFS, what we call executive function skills, can be developed especially through from five to the adult, young adult years. So it is important for us in the primary school years to develop this executive function skills. 
This shows that at different age groups, there are developmental spurts. And we want to capitalize and make sure that we um, address those needs of our children and equip our children with these EFS skills in this age range. What are the core areas of EFS? Three core areas. One, cognitive flexibility. Two, working memory. And three, inhibitory control. There are sub skills to this EFS. On the left, you'll see that there's the planning and activation. How children sometimes need to be taught how to plan and organize and get started on work. Right below that, focus. It's not easy for children sometimes to be focused or to sustain that focus for long periods of time. How do we teach them or give them skills, equip them with skills to do that? Memory, working memory. So little games that we play with our children, I spy with my eye, or a memory games of flipping over word cards or picture cards, all actually um, helps our children to develop their working memory. At the top right hand corner, emotions. It's important as well for our children to regulate their emotions. Self-monitoring for our children to be able to know where they are, how they're doing, and to evaluate their progress. Flexibility is just as important whether children are able to shift from one task to another or to shift their attention or change their focus. All these are important. This slide shows you what we have planned for our pilot of rolling out executive functioning skills throughout the levels. So at P1, we have sustained attention and task initiation. P2, organization. P3, we focus on emotional control and response inhibition. P4, planning and time management, P5, flexibility, and P6, metacognition. And throughout the six levels, we are also equipping our children to in the development of working memory as it develops at, differently at the different age groups, ending with P6 on goal-directed persistence. These EFS skills have been mapped out against each level to address the changing needs as our children grow into each level. And to do this, we really need you to partner us and to talk to our children and to find out and work along with the school in the development of these skills. And to work with us, it's important for you to communicate with our teachers. It can be our subject teachers, our form teachers, heads of department or year heads. And there are various platforms for you to communicate with them. You can email them directly, leave a message at the front desk and the message will be channeled to the teachers. You can write in to our Lakeside generic email or attend one of these parent-teacher meetings and to be informed of the various development of the school. It's important for you to um, continue to communicate with us. So if you do have any issues, any concerns, do contact us directly and write to us. You can also write to school leaders using the generic mail and we will respond to you accordingly. So it's important for all these stakeholders, school partners in the community, our school advisory community, our PSG, our parent volunteers and parents like you, all our stakeholders to join hands and to work together to develop our children because it takes a village to raise a child. With that, I thank you.
parents, let me now share with you the PSLE scoring and SET1 posting systems. Most of us will know that PSLE has actually been around for a very long time as we ourselves have also taken the PSLE. Uh, the intent of the PSLE over the years has not changed. It is a, continues to be a useful checkpoint at the end of primary school. At the same time, it acts as a fair way to determine the secondary school posting for all the students who are taking the P6 PSLE at the end of every year. Uh, over the years, especially in the recent years, there is definitely a, a, a conscious effort to move away from the overt emphasis on academic results and therefore the change in the PSLE scoring system. Uh, three key uh, purposes. Number one, to reduce the fine differentiation of students' exam results at a young age. Number two, to recognize students' level of achievement regardless of how his or her peers have done. So in the new system, uh, the, it, it, it takes into consideration the actual scores of your students, of your child, and not the score of your child in comparison to his peers. And finally, we would like to encourage families and parents to, to, to talk and have conversations about which secondary school would be the most suitable for the child. Let's look at how the PSLE scoring system works. The PSLE system have uh, shifted from a T-score, which is a PSLE aggregate, to scoring bands. So if you look at the table, every raw mark range, so depending on where your child scores for his PSLE, the score will be converted to an achievement level. AL in the table stands for achievement level. So there are a total of eight achievement levels, AL1 to AL8, with its corresponding raw mark ranges. So um, this will reduce the fine differentiation. So you will notice that um, between 75 and 79, for example, uh, the children will still be in AL4. So there's no longer a need to fight for every single mark uh, in the old system when we had the aggregate scores. And of course, uh, I mentioned earlier, this reflects the child's individual level of achievement. So it's based on the raw score of your child's result, not vis-a-vis -vis or in comparison with his peers. Okay, similar for foundation subjects, uh, the raw score is also given a mark range. Depending on how your child scores within the range, he will be given an ALA to AL6. The ALA and AL6 will then be converted to a standard level AL as shown in the previous table. So an A will correspond with a AL of 6, a B a 7, and a C at the foundation level will be AL8 at the standard level. So each student will get a, a achievement level for each of the four subjects. So when the total score of each of the achievement level is added up, as you can see in the example, English 3, Mother Tongue 2, Mathematics 1, and Science 2, the child will get a total PSLE score of 8. Okay, so depending on the kind of score that they get, uh, the child will be able to opt for the different streams in secondary school. So as you can see, the, the, the bands again for each of the options are pretty wide. So uh, the Depending on the score, the child will be placed at a stream that is suitable for him or her in secondary school. Okay, do take note in the last column that I put in the green box that uh, the it is important that your child gets AL7 for English and Mathematics. Should they get an AL8 for either one of the subjects, the child will likely have to repeat uh, primary 6. For students who like to opt for higher mother tongue in secondary school, here is the eligibility criteria. Uh, the first one is they must have a PSLE score of 8 or lower. Uh, alternatively, if you have a PLLE score of between 9 to 14, you can still opt for higher mother tongue, uh, but you must get an AL1 or 2 in your mother tongue. Or if you are already doing higher mother tongue in primary school, you need to get a distinction or a merit. Now let's look at how SET1 posting system works with the uh, level achievement PSLE score. Each student will be given up, up to six choices in selecting their secondary schools. So similarly, academic merit will still be the top priority. Then uh, in this new system, the choice order of schools is also important. Uh, so typically, 
the score will be used to decide who goes who gets a place in secondary school should the PSLE score be the same there are several tiebreakers the first one being citizenship so a Singapore citizen will have a, a higher priority over a permanent resident for example so should the citizenship be the same then they will look at the choice order of schools so if you are very keen to enter a certain school it's important therefore to put it as a higher choice out of the six choices that you and your child can make together and finally if all else fails and everything remains the same uh, computerized balloting will be used to determine the placement PSLE score ranges for individual secondary schools the score ranges for all primary schools should be available on the MOE websites listed here on this slide by the end of March 2022 uh, do go in and visit to look at uh, the intake for each secondary school if you are attending to uh, place your child in a SEP school uh, that offers higher Chinese, uh, then please pay attention to the following slide. Uh, first and foremost, I would like to share that uh, a student who doesn't do higher Chinese in primary school can still opt to go to a SEP school and take higher Chinese in secondary school. Uh, so the, the, the entry to the SEP schools will still be determined by the PSLE score. So if you look at the example, first student with a PSLE score of 7, even though he does not have higher Chinese in primary school, he will still be the first one uh, with the priority to enter the SEP schools. Okay, subsequently, when the scores are the same, they will look at the higher Chinese grade, whether you get a distinction or a merit or a pass, and they will be arranged accordingly and ranked uh, in that order who goes into the next school. And finally, even if you have a distinction, but your AL score is 9, you will still uh, have to be join the queue behind those who score a, a PSLE score of 8. I would like to share with you some tips on how you can choose suitable secondary school with your child. I think one important thing is to have a conversation with your child. Uh, make sure that you discuss with him, look through the schools together, attend the open houses and come to a joint decision. Uh, I think usually from our children's uh, feedback to us, I think it makes a lot of difference to them that their parents go through this process together with them rather than the parents choose their school for, for them. As we have mentioned a few times, and I think similarly, your uh, child's teachers will reinforce this with them again. I think it's important to shortlist schools that offer programs that cater to your child's strengths and interests, as well as uh, academic fit. Then, of course, take reference from the PSLE score ranges. Uh, then that, that will act as a guide. Uh, as to whether uh, you think your child will be able to make it to that school. Uh, do consider uh, different sets of schools that have different PSLE score ranges. Uh, so that will increase the chances of your child getting in the school of your choice. Each student is given six options uh, for selecting secondary schools. So do make use good use of all the six options and, and, and fill up all the options. We do have some instances where um, the, the children did not fill up all the options and in, in the event that they are not able to get the options, the posting will then be done by MOE centrally. Okay, then of course, uh, now that choice order is very important, so do think carefully and rank your child's preferred school uh, higher to increase the chances of getting into the school. I think as parents, uh, we all want what's best for our children. Uh, so much as we push them to, to, to do their best and to get to the best school that they can, sometimes you also need to be uh, more realistic and have a good uh, conversation with our children. So be open and flexible when discussing your the child's preference and so on. Uh, have regular conversations with your child. I think at the end of the day, it's a decision that you and your child have to make together. The teachers can advise, but uh, at the end of the day, I think it's still your decision and your child's decision to make. Um, manage your own expectations. Uh, much as we want our children to go to top schools, not the top schools may not be suitable for everyone. So do think about how your child can manage and enjoying i think secondary school four years is very important uh, and finally affirm your child and offer the support that he or she needs uh, 
in this year and and in his in his journey of getting to know himself or herself better. If you want to find out more about PSLE, do go to this website geo.gov.sg slash pslefsbb. I think a lot of uh, what you want to know will be found here. Okay, it's a very comprehensive website with all the necessary information as well as further elaboration on what I have already shared. Uh, here are some other important websites that you can go to uh, for advice, for more information about the various secondary schools and so on. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Good afternoon, parents. Let me share with you a little bit about direct school admission, DSA. There are two ways that a primary six student can enter secondary school. One is uh, through PSLE Set 1 posting. That would be the route that most primary school students will take, uh, and it will be based on their PSLE and the PSLE score that they get after that series of exams. The second way is through direct school admission, DSA. Uh, which focuses on the talent that your child has and matching his talent to the secondary school that provides and is able to continue to give him the opportunity to hone his talent and skills. This slide shows a rough timeline of the process of DSA throughout the year. Uh, the current specific dates for 2022 uh, is not out yet. So generally, uh, in early May, uh, we will be letting your kids know about the application for DSA. Then in the months of June to August, that will be where your kid may or may not be shortlisted for the various trials and auditions that he has to go through with the secondary school. Uh, in late October, you will receive the offer uh, from the secondary schools. And finally, in late November, uh, the results will be finally released together with the set one uh, with the PSLE results. So what are the schools looking for? So typically each secondary school will have their own niche areas and areas of strengths. So if your child has a talent that matches their niche area and your, your areas of strength, uh, your child would be a good fit and a good match for the school. So it will depend on a child's talent, passion and commitment to pursue a particular area of talent. Of course, the, other than looking at just talent, they also look at personal qualities like your values, your commitment, uh, how confident your child is uh, in carrying himself. And finally, uh, there also has to be a good academic fit. Otherwise, uh, your child may be overly stressed academically if you enter a school where the academic fit is not uh, appropriate. So as mentioned earlier, it is very important that there's a right match and a right fit between your child and the secondary school that he's going to. Um, definitely your child will be there for the next four years and I would think that it was important to your child and to all of us that the child enjoys and have a good learning experience in the four years in secondary school. So finding the right match is very important. Um, to find out more about each school, uh, there will be a lot of uh, places where you can get more information. Uh, I also refer to some of it in the later part of the slides. Uh, there are many things you can do, like visiting the school websites, attending the school open houses. Uh, I'm not sure whether the COVID situation this year will permit it. Uh, hopefully, they will be able to conduct face-to-face -face open houses where you can do school visits uh, this year. If not, there will be many open houses virtually that you can attend as well. DSA has been around for several years already and over the years, um, MOE has made several refinements to the process of DSA. I think one of the best one that parents really appreciate the most would be the customized DSA secondary school portal. So regardless of which secondary school or which talent area that you're applying to, uh, there will only be one central portal that you can go to and the preparation and the documents required are all similar regardless of which school and many of which can are actually already in the school cockpit which is the primary school uh, uh, record system for every student. More will be shared with your child about the portal nearer the application dates. Uh, MOE has created a website uh, beta.moe.gov.sg slash DSA, which houses all the information that you would like to know about DSA. So do visit this website. Uh, if you have any other questions, do feel free to approach the school or ask uh, your child's uh, form or co-form teachers.
There are several things that we are doing at Lakeside to support our students in DSA as well. The first one would be the video chat with Lakeside alumni, where our ex-students will share with our P6 students some tips and strategies on how to apply and uh, take part more effectively in the DSA trials and auditions. Uh, our teachers will also be having talent conversations with some of our students to help them uh, to better understand themselves and their talent and whether they have uh, talent areas that matches the secondary school that they would like to go to. Uh, Lakeside has also uh, produced a listing of schools in a, in a surrounding area that, that matches some of the CCA and the talents that some of our kids may display. And finally, as a West Zone, there's also a West Story publication. We'll share the link with you uh, on our school website. In fact, it's already there. Uh, the West Stories is one that features all the secondary schools in the West that gives you a little bit more insight into what makes each of these secondary schools tick and whether your child will be a good fit to these secondary schools. Okay, I've come to the end of my sharing. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Bye-bye. I'll be taking you through details of the subject-based bending or SBB today. Let me start with the intent of SBB first, which remains the same even with the PSLE 2021. Basically, we want our students to stretch their potential for the stronger subjects and focus on building fundamentals for the subjects they're not strong in. Next, I would like to share the factors that we consider when you recommend a subject combination to the child. Firstly, the child's aptitude, motivation and performance in the subject. Secondly, the child must be able to cope with the subject combination. Thirdly, we want to ensure that the child will be ready for progression to secondary school with the combination offered. So from what I've shared, you will realize that the foundation subject is not a disadvantage as long as the subject combination is in the best interest of the child. This slide gives an overview of SBB at the primary school level. Let me start at what happens at primary four. At primary four, students take school-based examinations. The school will recommend a subject combination that we feel the child will benefit from. At P4, parents will be given the option of selecting the school recommended combination or any other combinations that the school offers. The teachers may also engage the parents should they need more information to make an informed decision. At P5, the child will take the combination the parents have chosen. At the end of P5, the subject combinations will be reviewed. Some students may need to change the subject combination, that is, they may move from taking standard subjects to foundation subjects or a combination of standard and foundation subjects if they're not coping so well after one year, which is at the end of P5. At P6, the child will take the school recommended subject combination and sit for the PSLE. Parents will not be given any option form at the end of P5. This table shows the various subject combinations and the criteria used. So let me just give you an example. If a child passes three or four subjects, he can take all the subjects at the standard level. And if a child passes only two subjects, there's several subject combinations that we can offer depending on the performance of the child in that, that particular subject. Let me now explain one of the subject combinations for standard subject with an additional subject, which is higher mother tongue or 4S1H combination. This is offered to a child who has performed very well for all four subjects and especially mother tongue, and he will be offered this 4S1H subject. To continue taking 4S1H at P6, at the end of P5, the students must meet the following criteria. They should get at least 70 marks in standard mother tongue and 50 marks in higher mother tongue. Let me explain the rationale for this criteria. Basically, the child has to be able to cope with the four subjects before being able to take a fifth subject, which is higher mother tongue. Students taking higher mother tongue will be staying back at least once a week for the higher mother tongue lessons and need to put in additional time and effort for this subject. So we want to ensure the child will be able to cope with all five subjects. This particular slide shows us the various scenarios and possible outcomes. 
So for example, let me just uh, explain one. Uh, pupils who do not meet the expectations for a particular subject, they will be asked to switch some of these subjects to the foundation level at P6, and that will be the subject they seek for at PSLE. So there are students who will be able to take, for example, two standard subjects, standard English and standard mother tongue, while taking foundation mathematics and foundation science, for example. As we have communicated, the new AL or achievement level will take effect from this year's PSLE. This table shows the placement outcome and PSLE score. So to give you an example, a foundation subject grade A is equal to standard subject AL6. So this example shows a child taking foundation subjects with standard subjects and this child will be eligible for, uh, for example, one of the streams, express streams, if the child meets the criteria for the PSLE score. Let me share a little bit more about taking higher mother tongue at secondary schools. Students will be able to take higher mother tongue at secondary schools if they obtain the following PSLE score that you see on this screen. So a PSLE score of 8 or better or PSLE score of 9 to 14 inclusive of the following AL1 or 2 in mother tongue or distinction of merit in higher mother tongue. So a child who does not take higher mother tongue at primary school will not be at a disadvantage. The child will therefore be able to take higher mother tongue in secondary schools if he meets this criteria. Next, I will share about the HCL, Higher Chinese Language Admission to Special Assistance Program or SEP schools. Let me now share with you how HCL grades can be used for admission into SEP schools. Before 2021, for admission to SEP schools, students are awarded bonus T-score points based on their higher Chinese grades. Moving forward in, from 2021, students with better PSLE scores will be posted first, even if they did not take higher Chinese language. Among students with the same PSLE score, those with better higher Chinese grades will be posted first. This posting advantage applies before the tiebreaker for SEP1 posting takes place. This slide shows the example I was talking about earlier, which is how the HCL grades are used for admission to SEP schools. So as you can see, the first child posted to this SEP school is one with a PSLE score of 7, but without higher Chinese language grades. Subsequently, the next few students have the same PSLE score. So the second child posted is one with HCL distinction. And the fifth one in that group with the same PSLE score is one without HCL. Then after this group would be the next one, the sixth child, the PSLE score is nine, but with a distinction in higher Chinese language. So this captures what I've been talking about earlier. Thank you for joining us for this session. If you have any further questions, do check with the subject teachers or you can post the questions later during the Parents' Connection session. Thank you. Welcome back, parents, to our 2022 Parents' Connection session. We will enter into the Q&A segment very soon. We hope that the video briefing that that you've just listened to was helpful for you. But if you do still have questions for us, do enter the questions, submit them through the QR code that's right on the screen. Now, let me introduce my panel of, um, with me here, my panelists, right at the top first uh, individual, we have Madam Teo, HOD curriculum. Madam Teo. Yeah, good afternoon, everyone. Madam Go, HOD for Math. Good afternoon, everybody. Mrs. Walker, HOD English. Hello, everybody. Mrs. Chi, our senior year head for primary three and four. Good afternoon, everyone. Ms. Uma, my vice principal. Good afternoon, everyone. Ms. Tan, my other vice principal. Hello, parents. Mrs. Ang, assistant year head for primary six. Good afternoon, everybody. Madam Shahida, HOD for Aesthetics. Good afternoon, parents. Miss Lo, subject head for Chinese language. Good afternoon, parents. And Mrs. Kuma, subject head for Tamil language. 
Hi, good afternoon, parents. All right, let's begin our session. We do have uh, quite a number of questions that has been submitted earlier. Um, let's begin with school programs. So our questions fall into a few categories. There are school programs uh, for primary four to six, and then we have questions on subject-based banding, fewer because of the video briefing, and some questions on PSLE, be it um, the, the administration of it and some of on our last year's results. Okay, let us begin. First question, on our P4 and P5 program, um, the question goes like this, with the current situation, how will the school carry out our P4 and P5 CAM? And there's another question on uh, swimming, the P4, whether there's swimming program for our P4. Can uh, Mrs. Chi, can you take the questions, please? Thank you, Mrs. Go. So for swimming lessons, the school is currently still waiting for MOE's instructions. At this moment, swimming lessons have not resumed. Uh, if it should resume, we will definitely inform the parents. As for the P4 and P5 camp, last year, we, it, they were carried out in the form of a two-day day camp. Students did not stay overnight. They were conducted in the school premises. We explored virtual learning experiences to meet the learning objectives for the activities that could be carried out uh, despite the safety guidelines due to COVID situation. If the COVID situation remains similar to last year, the format of the camp will most probably be similar to last year as well. Thank you, parents. Okay, thank you, Mrs. Chi. Okay, let us look at um, some other questions on our program for P4 to P5. This is one question on assessment. All right, it's about school returning our mid-year assessment papers after June holidays. Can school return the papers before June holidays to allow parents to help our children close the gaps? Uh, we talked a little about it. So um, our uh, Mrs. Chi is in charge of uh, exams, the assessment. So Mrs. Chi, could you address that, please? Okay, last year, the papers were written after June holiday. Basically, uh, it was because home-based learning was activated on 19 May and our science paper ended on 18 May. So there was actually not enough time for the teachers to mark, go through, and also go through the corrections with the students before HBL was activated. This year, mid-year examination, if not disrupted by unforeseen measures implemented due to COVID situation, we are certainly working towards returning the papers before the June holidays. Thank you, parents. Thank you. I'm going to cover um, questions on P4 to 5. So this one also talks about uh, 4 and 5 on class allocation. So it will be Mrs. Chi again. So how would our students be uh, streamed uh, in terms of uh, class allocation from P4 to P5? Mrs. Chi, can you just take that? Sure. Thank you, Mrs. Go again. So for class allocation at the end of P4 to P5, it's basically done based on the following criteria. The subject combination, foundation or standard subject, depending on uh, which is more suitable for the child that the school recommends. Non-academic considerations such as dynamics of the student students, learning pace of the students. We also do consider factors like gender, racial composition when we form the class. So these are the different uh, aspects that we consider to ensure a good balance and distribution of the P4 to, from P4 to P5 classes. Thank you. Thank you. So whatever it is, the class allocation takes into consideration the needs of the students and um, they are placed right-sighted, placed in a class where it will meet their needs best. Okay, let's move on to questions on some of the subjects um, here. Let's begin with English. Uh, question goes like this. So how do I help my child to improve his writing skills in composition? This is quite a, a common question, but um, very valid. So Mrs. Walker, can you address this question, please? Uh, I think I can address it on behalf of Mother Tongue as well, because uh, for both languages, um, the, the skills required will be quite similar. 
Um, so when we look at improving composition, we need to consider two aspects, content development and language accuracy. So content development is related to whether the story is complete, whether it has enough details for the reader to fully understand what is going on, and also the interest level for the reader. Um, we um, encourage the children to make use of a story structure, a story mountain, um, a strategy that they learn in English, but also definitely applicable to uh, mother tongue. Um, in that every story, there must be a problem and a subsequent attempt to resolve the problem. And also for language accuracy, we are looking out for writing that is grammatically accurate and um, appropriate vocabulary is used. So I think for both English and mother tongue, we help the children to be familiar with the meaning um, of the words and phrases used as well as um, the spelling of it. And um, how parents can help would be to encourage their children to use sentence structures that they are familiar with and um, to be confident of. And as students become more confident, they can write more complex sentences. Um, also, that being said, do encourage your child to read widely um, and writing is a process. I believe that uh, what is important is for the children to find their voices and their own style. So, um, Minimal memorization of model compositions, maybe only at the start, uh, but eventually children should be able to find their own voice and um, make their writing unique to themselves. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Walker. A question on mother tongue, um, Chinese language in particular. Uh, my child is weak in Chinese writing. Okay, so very similar to uh, what Mrs. Walker has um, addressed. So uh, would um, Ms. Law like to add on to what Mrs. Walker has mentioned? Okay, thank you, Mrs. Go. Um, uh, Mrs. 通过一个叙述一件事交流一些对话那我们当然就是说在写这个事情发展的时候观察那个作文图片有丰富有有趣的一些描写
呃评分的，呃，里面都有列列出一些细节，比如说好像 D 是代表 dialogue 啊，人物的对话，那 action 是 A 动作的描写。比如三步并做两步，然后就是人物的心理活动，就是 emotion、expression， 还有 thoughts 啊，这些哈、啊、表情、动作等等。所以其实这些其实是可以，这些啊、嗯、要素啊，写作的要素是可以丰富到那个写作的。那语言方面的话，当然就是说你要多看啊，你要有一个输输入啊，语言的输入就多看多听。听好的作品，比如说电视剧，哈，呃，有一些很好的电视剧，还有就是多看 YouTube 上面也有很多成语，比如说小胖哥哥的成语解释，啊，还有老师提供的一些好词佳句的单词啊，啊，故事书推荐啊，还有就是甚至优秀的作文。那我们每个学段呢，啊，华文部都会收集学生的好作品，然后再分享给。呃，各个年级的学生，呃，去年我们也开始出版很精、很漂亮的一个作文集，然后分给了呃学生们，所以呃，学生孩子们都可以呃去参考、去多读，然后再记一记啊、呃，学一学啊、呃，然后呢，嗯、呃，当然就是课文中不要离啊、呃，也离不开一些很好的句式，还有一些好词佳句，这些都可以用的啊。那除了练写作文，那当然啊、呃，嗯，孩子可以开始写一些周记或者日记，写一些呃一件事，还有他们的那个感想啊、呃，还有心情的表达，这些都是一个非常好的写作习惯。好，谢谢老师，答得很棒哦。OK， thank you， Miss Low。Um， let's move on to a math question. Uh, for from a P five and P six parent, my child is very weak in math, but I um don't wish to see her drop foundation. Is there any way I can help her? Does the school arrange for extra remedials for uh weaker students? Can uh, Madam Go take this question, please? Sure, I'll answer this question. Yeah, so let me just generally share that uh for students who are weaker in maths, consistency is key. So in order to improve in maths, you've got to be consistent in your learning daily, and this doesn't really apply only to mathematics. I think in all subjects as well. So for mathematics, what they learn lay daily in the class, it will be good that you can talk to your child about it at home. The textbook will serve as a very good resource for the children to talk to and to talk to your parents about what they have learned in class. And ah,、uh, the other thing about being consistent is about doing homework, completing it, handing it in. And then also following up with corrections. Okay, so、uh, on the other hand, on practicing,、uh, the school subscribe to Qubits for mathematics for the children, so they get to log into Qubits to do their daily challenges. So consistency is really essential, and then、um, we hope that、uh, this will help the child、uh, follow up with learning of mathematics. And then with the remedial question. In fact, our P four, P five, and P six, ah,、uh, P four and P six have started the remedial lessons already. So, with with our students' well being in mind, and with S N M measures in place, we are also planning to start the P five, ah,、uh, remedial for academic subject. This term, they are having a very exciting time staying back for other enrichment lesson, which is very important as well. Yeah. So yes, we will be conducting remedial for the children. And for remedial, the class teachers would select students who need and will benefit most from the remedial. Yeah. So if your child is not chosen, for example, there will be other ways that we can help your child. Do speak to the teachers, and then they will tell you what your child actually need. Then we can partner the parents together, and then we will work with the child. I hope that answered the question. Thank you very much. Thank you, Madam Go. Okay, so、um, there's no one course that is better than another course. So it's not、um, uh, standard、uh, math is better than foundation math. What's really important is what works best for your child to cope. Taking into consideration, like what Madam Go mentioned, the well-being of your child. So some children,、um, when they have switched to foundation math,、uh, actually do better, build a, a better, increase self-esteem, and they're more confident in the subject. So it's really about your child, your child's need, and、um, to place your child in the right course. 
Okay, let's move on to the next uh, question on higher mother tongue. So could I get um, uh, Mrs. Kuma to answer this question, please, on P4 higher mother tongue. So does uh, Lakeside offer higher uh, mother tongue? Let's do uh, talk about mother tongue in general, not just Chinese. How will students be assessed? And if they um, take the higher mother tongue, are they allowed to drop the higher mother tongue in P6 if they are not doing well? Okay, Mrs. Kuma, please. Okay, thank you for the question, Mrs. Go. So in Lexa, we have been offering higher mother tongue at P5 and P6 uh, levels all this while. And students will be selected for this higher mother tongue based on their performance during the subject-based uh, bending exam at the end of P4 level. And uh, on the part, uh, on the question about students, how will they be assessed? Basically, there'll be two components. They will sit for paper one first, the compo writing, and they also have to sit for paper two, which includes the uh, language use and the comprehension skills. And at the end of P5, if the students are not doing well, we would recommend them to drop so that they can use the time um, where they take high mother tongue and in, we see that they are struggling, they can use that time to concentrate on the other main subjects, which is the English, math, science and the standard mother tongue at P6 level. That will definitely help them to channel their energy to prepare for PSLE. And on the same note, maybe uh, let me also address on the question about dropping higher mother tongue and how it will impact uh, Charles' uh, AL score in PSLE. Mrs. Go, maybe I address yes. that part. Please go uh, ahead. Okay, so the high mother tongue score, just take note that it will not be included into the total PSLE score, the, the aggregation of the PSLE score. And the advantage of taking higher mother tongue is basically to build one's uh, interest in mother tongue as well as to deepen their knowledge. So uh, for the higher Chinese students, uh, it will come in play for the secondary school posting when there is a tiebreaker. So basically, students uh, will be posted to secondary school based on their total PSLE scores. And the first criteria is, uh, for example, a student with better uh, PSLE scores will be posted first, even if that child has not taken a uh, higher Chinese um, language. The second level of criteria will be for students with the same PSLE score, uh, students with better uh, grade in higher Chinese will be posted first. So a child who has scored distinction as compared to a child who has scored pass, the child who has distinction will get the placing first. I hope I've answered the question. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Kuma. A science question now for you, um, P5 and P6 science. So Madam Teo, um, this is for you. Can you share strategies on how I can help my child craft his answers in open-ended section in booklet B so that his answers address the questions? Uh, can you also take together uh, the question on how to help children better learn challenging topics in science? Madam Teo, please. Okay, thank you for the question. All right, so in school, what we actually help the children with is actually we teach them the CER method to answer open-ended questions. Um, so using the CER method, it actually helps the children to focus on the relevant information in the question. So it also helps them to structure that answer. So um, usually the teachers will actually model the usage of CER uh, where we go through work with the children. So it will be very useful if your children actually take note of the annotations um, and then so that they are actually able to apply it on their own when they are completing their homework. Um, and I feel what is most important is that they need to practice this skill um, because uh, consistency will actually help them to perfect it. Okay, um, so with regards to um, challenging topics, usually children will find topics which are a little bit more abstract, um, challenging to understand in terms of the concepts. Uh, so what parents could actually help um, in, in this respect would be to engage the children in conversations, like because science is actually all around us. So it's really about application. So if you engage your children in conversations about things that they learn in school um, or things that they observe around them and help them to actually see the connection uh, between what they learn 
uh, in school and what is actually happening around them. So I think that will actually be very useful. Um, and of course, do encourage um, your child to read widely beyond the textbook. So we have actually started like this year, we have actually started the subscription for young scientists. So um, we do notice that um, there's a high take up rate and many children have subscribed to that. So um, reading additional information beyond the textbook will actually be helpful. And of course, um, watching documentaries. Science, science documentaries um, that, that actually shares extra information with them. I mean, it creates that, uh, that interest and then it also um, gets them excited about the topic. Um, but what is most important is to work with the teachers. So if, the, if your child has any questions that they're not um, clear about, do encourage them to come to school and clarify with the teachers. And I feel that's most important. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Okay, let's... Um... Take a question on CCA. Okay, that's uh, for Madam Shahida. That's a question for you on um, child taking uh, who attends gymnastics with outside agency. If there's an inter school competition, can my child participate by representing the school, even though the CCA is not offered at Lakeside? Madam Shahida? Okay, I'll take this question. Uh, yes, your child will be able to participate in the competition. Uh, there will be provision to support schools where that sports, for example, here the question on gymnastics, right? We do not have it offered as a CCA. Uh, but in this instance, uh, we will need the parent or a legal guardian to be appointed as the school adult representative uh, to accompany him or her for all the competitions that follows. Uh, I believe that uh, you, we will get in touch with you so that we can uh, follow up uh, to go through the processes and also the necessary briefing required to prepare you for this appointment. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Shahida. On CCA and DSA, um, Ms. Tan, uh, can you take this question on DSA? If my child does not have the CCA to apply for a D DSA area, what can he or she do about it? Um, can CCA teachers advise further? Um, could you take it with the, another question on also C, uh, CCA, DSA in secondary school uh, and how um, the child can apply for, for DSA? Ms. Tan, can you take those two questions? Please unmute yourself, Ms. Tan. Okay, sorry about that. Uh, in DSA, I think even though the secondary schools are looking for specific uh, niche areas that their school are strong in, like basketball, choir, for example, uh, in their selection, they do not only look for specific skills in this sports area or arts area. They're also looking out for students who have the right disposition, uh, the right learning attitude and the motivation to be ready to train and practice this to become better. So skills like agility, flexibility, artistic disposition, leadership qualities, confidence, these are skills that can actually transfer across different CCAs and activities. So if your child during the trial and audition, they are able to show that they have some of these dispositions, they can also be selected uh, for that particular DSA, even though they do not offer the same CCA as what the school is looking for. Um, as we speak, we are also in the midst of preparing more sharing uh, with our P6 students. So definitely there are plans for our teachers and our CCA teachers to have further conversations with the students who may be interested in DSA. And as well, we will be conducting a briefing for parents just looking and addressing the issue of DSA because I think there's a, a lot of information to be shared. Okay, so um, another platform, we will definitely have another platform where we will engage any parent who's interested to find out more about it. The specific dates and details for this year's DSA is not out yet. So uh, we'll be waiting for those information to come in. Then we'll have a meeting with you and we are able to give you more specific information that, that could be more helpful than for you. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Ms. Tan. Okay, so we are moving on to um, questions on PSLE. And there's one question um, on the, the results, our so past year results. So, Ms. Uma, could you take this question on um, 
what's the percentage of students eligible for secondary school uh, for last year's PSLE? Ms. Uma, please. Okay. Thank you, parents, for your interest. I know there's always an interest. Uh, parents always keen to know. Uh, our students did do well, and close to 97% of our students uh, made it to secondary school, and of which uh, more than uh, about 60% went to the express stream. All right, and about uh, close to 28% in normal academics. So they did well. Thank you. Thank you. So I hope that assures you a little bit uh, as we move on to ask quite a bit of uh, the other questions on PSLE, like this one asks about if my child misses the PSLE, will there be a makeup examination? Uh, and if there's no makeup, how will his score be calculated? Uh, Ms. Tan, you'll be able to address this? Uh, yes, thank you. Um, there is no makeup for PSLE. Uh, I think children missing PSLE is not a new problem. I think before COVID, there were already cases of students who are ill or for some reason not able to take PSLE. So definitely, this is not a new problem for SEAB. Uh, SEAB is the exam branch. So uh, typically, that makes the prelim results for your child very important uh, if he or or she were to miss PSLE. So SEAB will um, request for our schools your child's, PS, uh, your child's prelim results as well as the prelim results of five students above your child and five students below your child. So given the numbers, SEAB will use some standard mathematical formula to come up with a projected uh, total score for your child for that particular subject that he or she missed. Uh, another important thing I'd like to share with you also that uh, a valid reason like a medical certificate and stuff must be produced uh, if your child were to miss the exam. Uh, if there's no uh, valid reason or evidence produced, your child may or may not be, uh, your, may, may end up getting a no score. So, so do be mindful of that. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Ms. Tan. So not to worry, um, uh, there are provisions uh, and, and your child will, will not be um, disadvantaged. disadvantaged. Yeah. Uh, in, in fact, uh, personally, my, my own son uh, had chicken pox just in the, at the start of the, his PSLE. And uh, I would say that it's uh, the, the marks or the aggregate that was uh, given to him is reflective of uh, his ability. Okay, so not to worry, parents. Let's move on to the next question. Um, it's related on uh, COVID situation. If, if, if there's a positive case, or I would say if you are, the child is a positive case uh, and, and whether the P you'll be able to take the PSLE. This question asks about what happens if there, there are positive cases in the class. In the first place, there will not be uh, positive cases which are allowed to take the exams in the class. So if you, you are positive, don't come. Safety of others and yourself is first priority. Okay, uh, can your child still sit for the exam? No. So if you're not well, go take an MC. Uh, and if you are positive, then the more please uh, social exercise social responsibility and don't don't come and take the exam. Okay, there are more important things, yeah, in life. Okay, let's look at um, other PSLE questions. Um, let me see. This one on. Um, Parents learning, could uh, Miss Uma take that question on um, parents engagement? Would school be conducting parents workshop and share strategies with parents? Uh, we managed to share some strategies for some of the subjects here. So whether there'll be one, we used to have it on a Saturday, face-to-face. Yes. -face. Yes. Uh, Miss Uma. Yes, come. yes. Uh, as Mrs. Go said, we used to have a series of workshops which were put on hold during the COVID period due to SMM. We are reviewing our, this series of workshops we've been uh, conducting and now we will launch a new series, a parent learning series this year. However, we are starting with the P1s and 2s. So for the rest of the levels, we uh, encourage the parents to contact the subject teachers. Uh, if you'd like to know more about the strategies used in the classroom or you want to learn how you can support the, your child better. So uh, feel free to just drop an email or just uh, give your the subject teachers a call and they'll be able to take you through some of these strategies. Thank you. Thank you. 
there are quite a number of questions. We try to answer as many of, of them as possible. But if you don't get to answer the question that you've put up, don't worry, we'll get back to you either personally or we will send an email to answer your questions or through your teacher, subject teachers. There's one on science, on practical, science practical. So will there be science practical exams for primary five? Madam Teo, please. Okay, so we do actually, we have actually planned for a non-weighted practical component for the P5s in Term 3. So um, more details will actually be given nearer the date. Um, but not to worry, the children will be given sufficient opportunities to actually practice the practical skills um, throughout the lessons during the hands-on activities as well as the, um, the science investigations that they conduct during lessons. Yeah, thank you. Okay, okay there's this question on... Um, Back to P6, uh, my child is taking foundation subjects and how will his admission be affected for secondary school? How does the scoring for foundation uh, mother tongue subject or foundation Chinese affect his PSLE scoring? What's the impact? So can Mrs. Ang take this question? Mrs. Ang, please. Okay, thank you, parents, for the question. So just want to um, assure parents that foundation courses for students taking foundation courses, um, going to secondary school, it would be pretty much the same as uh, students taking standard courses. So let me explain it briefly. Under the new AL system, students who are taking foundation subjects will be graded uh, ALA to ALC. For posting to secondary school, ALA to C will be mapped to AL6 to AL8 then this will give your, your child an overall PSLE score. So for example, if let's say your child scores between a 30 marks and 74 marks, he will be graded a B for the subject. Then this will be mapped to an AL7. For posting to secondary school, if your child has an overall score of um, 23 or 24, he will be placed in an NA course. If your child scores between 26, and 30, he will be placed in an NT score, an uh, NT course, sorry. So just to um, highlight to parents also that to be eligible for secondary school, your child cannot achieve an AL8 in English or math, okay? So for standard, AL8 means it's less than 20 marks. For some foundation subjects, this means that your child cannot score less than 30 marks. Okay, for foundation Chinese or foundation mother tongue, the grading system is the same. So if your child takes, let's say, 3S1F, the foundation subject being a foundation mother tongue, your child will be able to score an AL1 to AL8 for his other three standard subjects and an AL6 to AL8 for foundation subjects. So this will still allow your child an overall grading for secondary one posting. So I hope that I have answered your question. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Ang. Um, there's a question for Ms. Tan on the, your briefing. So it's um, mentioning about um, in the presentation, Express NA and NT courses will be phased out by 2024. Uh, please explain what does this mean and how will it affect students in P4? Ms. Tan? Please unmute, Ms. Tan. So sorry. I think I'll take this question uh, with another one that asks whether uh, if a child is placed in a normal tech stream, can the child choose to repeat? Okay, so uh, typically PSLE result is a placement test, which will tell you which is a suitable course for your child. So should uh, a student be placed in a normal tech stream, then the child will have to opt for the normal tech stream. Okay, the repeating is only for students who fail their PSLE. Uh, we also take into consideration the self-esteem and the emotional aspect of the child, uh, which is very important. Imagine seeing all your friends going to secondary school while you have to stay in your primary school. So there could be some negative impact there. So repeating really is a, a, a last option for students who really cannot clear the PSLE. So we will advise all parents to move on uh, the children to move on to secondary school. 
So uh, in some schools, they already have what is called full subject-based spending. Okay, this is a situation where a child, for example, could be posted to the normal tech stream. But I may have done well for my science exam. I'm quite strong in my science. So in which case, the child will actually be allowed to do the science subject at the NA level. So even though I'm a post to the NT stream, I'm able to do subjects that I'm strong in, in the NA stream. So they, they, they do allow cross streams in some secondary schools. So to address the question about the phasing out of NA and T, so this will happen when all the secondary schools are able to offer full subject-based spending. The specific details of what's going to happen in 2024, we do not have it yet. So certainly when we get more information from MOE, we will inform the parents. So typically the child will do the subject at the ability that they are able to. So if I'm good in two subjects, I can do those two subjects at a higher level and the two weaker subjects I'll do at a lower level. Therefore, there will not be any NT, NA stream anymore. Yeah. Okay. I hope that answers the question. Thank you. Thank you. There's another question, Ms. Tan, on DSA. Would you be able to take it? Mm. On um, how will parents be informed on DSA application window period? Um, and if my child applies for DSA and does he still gain admission of the place offered if he does not meet the cutoff point of the school? Uh, one obvious thing is that if uh, you have been offered a place and you don't meet the, the minimal cutoff point for that offered place, um, then you lose your place. Okay. And uh, you want to take the other, other part of the question, uh, Ms. Tan? Yeah. Um, okay. As mentioned earlier, we do not have the specific dates yet. Uh, usually we will receive this information sometime in early April. So once we have the information, we will definitely share it with the students and we will also conduct a separate briefing for all parents on DSA. Uh, then we'll be able to give you uh, specific and exact advice on what needs to be done. Uh, as for the cutoff point, typically if your child is able to make it to the course that the school offers, uh, your child will not lose the place if he gets it for the DSA. Yeah. Okay, thank you, thank you Ms. Tan. Um, I think it's 5.25. We do not want to keep you. For the other questions on the subjects and how you can develop your child further in English, math, mother tongue and science, uh, look out for um, uh, uh, connections or um, advice from your, uh, the subject teachers and um, do stay connected with your form teachers and subject teachers. The other one would be um, DSA. So look out for when we are going to hold that uh, session on DSA. There'll be more details. It's just too much information for us to do that here. Uh, and then we will give you the details and the guidance for application of DSA. Okay, we hope that the session, uh, the briefing, as well as the Q&A session has been helpful for you. If you do have uh, other questions, do continue to engage your form teachers, subject teachers, our year heads or our HODs. Uh, the email addresses are on our website. Do connect with us. With that, we thank you for your time. Have a good evening and a good weekend. Thank you.